Good morning. Welcome to Life in Christ. The peace of the Lord be with you. As we gather today, this morning, it is good for us to take a few moments to quietly reflect on our baptism. How water and word come together to wash away all our unrighteousness. That same baptism connects us with Christ alone, by grace alone, through faith alone. As we celebrate this Reformation reality, we pray, pour out your Holy Spirit to guide your worship that you would be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Fill out the in, uh, attendance card. This is very important for us to keep record, so please fill out your uh, attendance card. Thank you. Reformation Day is to remember and celebrate that the church was founded by Jesus Christ as a living entity. Through the centuries, God has shaped the church and then reshaped it again and again so that every generation may experience the gospel in the language it can understand. Throughout these changes, God has preserved his word and sacraments. Like the church, we are individuals in the process of being shaped by God. We are, we are the clay, God is the potter. And just as he created us and all things, so one day Christ will we and all things be recreated and all that is mis misshapen or broken will be restored. We join in our first hymn. Please rise. <laughs>
begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. By the works of the law, no human being will be justified in God's sight. God is justified in the Lord, and faith in Jesus. Behold, like the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. The vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hand, and he removed it into another vessel, as it seemed good for the potter to do. As you are reshaped, the church, as you as you reshaped the church at the time of Luther, reshape us in this generation, Lord, to love you with all our God calls us to confess our sins. We observe a moment of silence for personal reflection and confession. God, you formed us in the womb and you shape our lives to love and honor you and our neighbors. For the sake of God, who made Christ Jesus to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Therefore, by the command of Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I speak of your testimonies before our kings, O Lord, and shall not be put to shame. I will bless the Lord at all times. His grace shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Come, Come on, children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, and as it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will speak of your testimonies before the Lord, before kings, O Lord, and shall not be put to shame. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, we are your pray. You are the Father. Form the church as a place where your gracious gifts find full expression. Form us as a people who receive your gracious gifts by faith. Let your mercy flow to all who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, for my God and my God forever. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. Good morning. Good morning. Our first reading this morning is from Revelations chapter 14. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth, 
to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. Our epistle lesson today from Romans chapter 3 verses 19 through 28. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law. Although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. (coughs) By what kind of law? By a law of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified (coughs) by faith apart from the works of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of our Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 8th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, Everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Please be seated for our sermon hymn. Oh, let's not be seated. Let's rise. (laughs) This is an awesome song, guys. Luther, uh, our brother Luther wrote this song for all of us, so sing out loud.
the words of my mouth and the thoughts of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our salvation. Amen. Please be seated. It was only about a half a mile. The monk walked from his cell in the monastery past the university where he was a teacher to the church at the other end of town. There he affixed a poster to the town's bulletin board, which was the church door of the Church of All Saints. If any of the common people had been passing by and were interested enough to take a look, they would soon have turned away in disappointment because the poster was in Latin. That's the way it could have happened on October the 31st in 1517 in the town of Wittenberg in the German principality of Saxony. We're talking, of course, about the publication of the 95 Theses by Martin Luther. Little did people realize that the hammer blows on the door of the castle church door would change not only Western Christianity, but history as well. We might ask, how could one man do it? The answer, he couldn't, and indeed he didn't. Looking at all the subsequent events of what we have come to call the Reformation of the Church, it's not about Martin Luther. It's not about the 95 Theses. It's not about the right timing. Rather, this is what it is all about. The Reformation is all about the one truth in Christ instead of many truths around us. Why celebrate Reformation at all? It's different from all the other feasts of the church. Christmas is about the birth of Jesus. Easter is about the resurrection of our Savior. Pentecost is about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon Christ's people, the Holy Spirit who endows us with true faith. Reformation. When Martin Luther issued his 95-fold call to the church, he was challenging Christians. He was challenging all Christians, at least in the Western church, to come back to the source of their faith and hope, the Word of God, the Bible. Admittedly, at the time, the church was doing fine if your standard is possessions or activity or people involvement and influence. If you were to have, or if you would have considered the Wittenberg Castle Church, everyone would have been and was full of admiration. There was a college of seven priests there, subject only to the Pope in Rome, with few, which drew rather thousands of visitors a year because in Wittenberg, the elector had a collection of relics in the church that was second, I think, only to the Vatican itself. Those seven priests conducted no less than 9,000 masses in a year. That provided a sizable income for the priests, but even more so, it provided for the people assurances for a quick release from purgatory. And that was a good deal all around and a great economic benefit for Wittenberg. And then here comes this monk. And he said, well, what did he say? Father Martin didn't say, don't listen to the church. They really don't have anything to say. That is a very popular notion among many Protestant churches today as they set themselves up on their own thinking about what the scripture says. Luther would have been horrified at that notion. 
Luther said, he preached, and if he were alive today, I dare say he would be using the internet. He said, let's get back to the source. And the source of faith, and therefore of the church, is the word of God, the Holy Scriptures. Jesus said, if you abide in my words, you are truly my disciples. How did those who heard Jesus speak those words respond? They said, we are offspring of Abraham. We have no need to rely on words of anyone else. We're proud of being descendants of that great prophet Abraham. At Luther's time, the response of church leaders was simply this. You, Martin, keep out of it. We know best. Today, we might hear something like this. I've been a member of the church my whole life, or I've been a member of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod my whole life, and I'm proud of it. So don't confuse me with the Bible and its mumbo-jumbo. Dare I ask you at this point about your faith in Christ or about your faithfulness to God's word? How would you respond? God's word is what the Reformation events were all about. Reformation Day is not about some German superhero named Martin Luther, but about God's grace and how that helped us recover the word of God. And here, in God's word, and yes, if you're looking at this copy, it's rather well-worn. I've been using this since 1979, and it's well-used. And it has notes in it, and that's okay to do. This is where you find truth, God's word alone. God's word alone is where we see the message of Christ Jesus. God's word alone is where we hear about the crucified and risen one. That's where we find the message of repentance and salvation. Look around today. There will be other Reformation Day services, I'm sure. There will be people who claim to be Lutheran, people who started out with the very same events of the Reformation, and yet their proclamation differs so much from ours that we might begin to wonder what Lutheran really means today. These days, there seem to be, even in the church, so many different views about what the scripture says that people ask, what does the Christian church really stand for? Jesus' words are clear. If you abide in my word, that is, if you listen to it, stick to it, remain in it, hang on it, then you're my disciples. How many baptisms have taken place in your lifetime? Yet, we don't see all of those blessed by water and the word sitting in the pews, do we? How many confirmands have vowed their fidelity to Christ and their loyalty to the church? Where are they now? I look back at my own confirmation class, and there were 33 of us in that class, confirmed in 1969. A year later, there were only three of us still active in worship. Some say, well, I'm moving to the next town. Okay, but leaving the faith, that's the tragedy that every pastor and congregation faces. Today, in fact, there's a segment of the population that's growing, and it is called the nuns. I'm not talking about the women religious in the Roman church. It's people 
who have given up on religion, organized religion, perhaps even the church, most likely the church, they claim neither. They're adrift in their own minds, their own subjective truth. How do we stick with the word? How do we abide in it? It would be overestimation to downplay the importance of Christian education, catechism instruction, both junior and adult, regular Bible class attendance and worship attendance. The survival of each person in the Christian faith is based in those things. That is why Christ, when he spoke the words of the Great Commission in Matthew's Gospel, didn't just say, go and baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. He also included, teach them to observe all that I have commanded you. And that teaching, that education process for us is an everyday event. It's nothing but a threat to your spiritual survival to disregard the word of God or to become separated from it. And churches and preachers who do that, who seek to win the approval of the majority instead of submitting to and upholding God's word will put the faith of their listeners into jeopardy, not to say their own faith as well. With our faith based on the Holy Scriptures, we dare not embrace convictions that are contrary to the scriptures. With the content of the Bible firm and clear, preachers have no right, and certainly the church does not have the authority to reinterpret the Bible so that it might be a better fit with modern views. Rather, the holy apostle St. Jude says, contend for the faith, fight for the faith. And this is the key part that was once for all delivered for the saints. Obviously, an insistence on one scriptural truth will not be appreciated everywhere or by everyone even in Christendom. There will be debate and disagreement and contention because everyone has their own personal subjective truth. But subjective truth, my friends, is no truth at all. But then, was that different in Jesus' time? The text and the verses that immediately follow after, we find Jesus saying, truly I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. I know that you are offspring of Abraham, yet you seek to kill me because my word finds no place in you. You are of your father, the devil, and your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning. And again, Jesus said, you are sinners. You are slaves. You seek to kill me. You are followers of Satan. Jesus did not mince any words when he spoke with those who relied upon themselves and rejected him and his word. And let me add, sermons that don't uncover sin, that do not show us our fundamental need for spiritual healing and restoration, such sermons ought to go directly into the trash. Perhaps what I've said so far is a little bit challenging, is a little bit much for you. Not exactly setting a very happy tone, am I? Perhaps you had hoped to hear more praises about Martin Luther in this sermon and many other faithful pastors and teachers. Well, I gotta tell you, Worship is not about the past. 
our worship services are always bringing forth a message for today. Christ's holy word and the blessed sacrament of the altar strengthen us for the road to the Christian's final destination. Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. That truth we learn true from Pastor Luther and from those faithful pastors and teachers following him. That truth says you cannot free yourselves from what you are. The sinner, Jesus says, is a slave bound, tied up and loaded down. But the truth also says above all that Christ Jesus, God's truth, is the truth that frees us. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. For Christians, truth is no theory or philosophy. It is not one subjective truth for me and another for you. The truth centers in the person of Jesus as God's final truth for the world and for the saving promise to each of us. It's all about Jesus. The promise is nothing less than true life in God's presence. What do you have to do to realize that promise? In our text, we hear, if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. And the Son has set you free. By Jesus' death on the cross, he forgives all of your sins. By his resurrection from the dead, he promises that you will be in heaven with him. Today we gather to celebrate a man. Though it is fitting to thank God for Martin Luther, he was but a servant of God. Today's worship really bids us to praise and thank God for our Redeemer, for giving us all for nothing for taking us from the captivity of self into the glorious spiritual freedom of the children and heirs of God. Without any merit on our part, we again hear Christ declaring us free from sin through the words of absolution spoken. We listen to the gospel of eternal liberty worked for each of us by the sacrificial death of Jesus himself. And we witness the power of the Savior's words, making ordinary bread and wine the bearers of nothing less than his true body and blood. Out of these simple earthly elements, the creative word of God makes a medicine of immortality. As St. Ignatius of Antioch says, for our lifetime walk to the gates of paradise. Now, why would anyone want to miss that? Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. Please rise as together we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. <clears throat> I believe in one God.
Please be seated as we continue with the offering. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the gift of these offerings that you've given to us. We know that all things belong to you, and we give those things which the abundance that you have provided for us to give to your church to help it grow in mission and, and, and bringing the word to those who have not heard. We pray this in our Lord Jesus' name. Amen. Join in prayers. Fill with God's grace, found in faith, and nourished by the word. Let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people according to their needs. For the church, that we faithfully use our freedom in the gospel to love and serve both God and our neighbor. Preserve the church from discord and strife. Let the world see that we are yours, O Lord, by our love for one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those entrusted to govern our nation, state, and local community, guide them and help them to care justly and mercifully for all people they serve. For the members of our armed forces, for victims of warfare and, and violence, and for our enemies, we pray that peace may prevail for all. Lord, in your mercy, let us pray for those who are suffering, those we have named and those we name silently in our hearts. We pray, we pray that their pain and anxiety will be, uh, will be relieved according to your will. For those who mourn the death of the loved ones, we pray that God's claim, that God calm their troubled hearts and give them peace to face the days ahead in confidence that he will never forsake them. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. let us pray for those who visit this, this congregation that they may find here a hosp hospitality that bears witness to the kingdom of heaven. For, for all who travel, we pray that they arrive safely at their destinations. For all the households of this congregation, grant that they may have be a haven of peace and places where Christ is proclaimed and lived. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. let us pray for this holy assembly that together we use our gospel freedom responsibly. By the Holy Spirit, grant that we all undergo ongoing reformation for our hearts and minds, and in the proper and in proper stewardship of our time, talents, and money, continue to be faithful partners in ministry. Lord, in your mercy, let us give thanks to those who have gone before us and are with the Lord, especially Martin Luther and all the reformers of the church. Sustain us in this earthly journey so that, trusting in the promises of Jesus, we too may know the joy of those who have died in the faith. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Holy God, hear these prayers of your faithful people. By your grace, grant us these things you see that we need for the sake of our Redeemer and Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
Please stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and grace. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into the flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in this sacrament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory and honor and worship with the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he blessed it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink ye all of it. This cup is the new covenant poured out for you in my blood, which is given or shed for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and drink, you led us or lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us pray. You, O Lord, are the potter, and we the clay. By Christ's body and blood in this sacrament, you shape us to be the body of Christ. Send us out from this table forgiven and restored, that we may freely bear the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. few announcements, or at least one. Uh, I can't see that. <laughs> Grieving group, November 14, 11 to 12.30. Thanks, Vember. I have no idea what that's about. Um, Gail, are you familiar with Natasha but, uh, Bartonelli, I think, sent the message. It's attached to the announcement. That's, yeah, okay. Um, anyway, take a look. It's, I'm not sure what it is. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sunday after, it's not a Thanksgiving. 
Thanksgiving, so we'll be eating leftovers, you know. So come on, come and eat the leftovers after Thanksgiving. So you're all welcome to come and, and enjoy Thanksgiving dinner here at Life of Christ on a, the Sunday after Thanksgiving. Okay, yeah. the next one. Thanksgiving collection, money and gift cards uh, are needed for needy families, uh, cards for grocery stores or Walmart, uh, deposit them in a container in the narthex. Deadline is next week, or the 12th, rather, and tonight, thank you, treat. Any others? I have one. Okay. As your Lutheran Hour representative here at Life in Christ, I'd like you to take a time and go to lhm.org and sign up for the daily devotions. We're, we've got a goal of 90,000 new members to the devotions every day, and we'd love to have every one of you sign up so we can meet this 90,000. And also on Sunday morning, you can hear Pastor Ziegler. His message is every Sunday, has a brilliant message to bring. So we'd love to have you support Lutheran Hour and listen to the daily devotions. Thank you. A note on the daily devotions. For those of you who have internet, you can access the Advent and Lenten devotions in place of the regular daily devotions that are published. So if you can't get the, the uh, devotional in paper, you can get it online. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.